Hi, this is Jamie, Intuitive Astrologer, and I want to share a little bit about the upcoming planetary energies. We are now in Pisces season. I love Pisces energy. It's dreamy and romantic and mystical, and you may or may not be feeling that vibe based on how the other um, planetary energies are activated in your chart and how you're experiencing them. We have some intense energies out there, like the Saturn Uranus square that the first of the three of this year became exact and that energy is with us all year long, kind of pressurizing ourselves to liberate ourselves from old structures, to really become our own authority, to really create a revolution within the body. And so I started my morning up before the sunrise to see Saturn and Mercury and Jupiter. And then I watched the sunrise knowing that Venus is there with the sun starting to travel behind the sun and getting that glorious pineal gland activation from that like sweet spot where you can sun gaze. And it was just so glorious and energizing. And I invite you to get out there and spend time with the morning sky. It's so, um, to me, it's so grounding and embodying to spend time out with the earth and the sky. It brings astrology out from the mind, the intellectual realm and into the body that we can sense with the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of the heart. You know, it really transcends these 2D charts that we're looking at with the astrology charts. And I always feel that the, um, my direct experience being outside with the planets those are my greatest teachings when it comes to astrology, something that's experienced um, as within. And so it's, I love to be outside with the morning sky, the evening sky, the day sky, it's all beautiful. In the evening sky, we can see Mars. In the morning sky, we can now see Saturn and Mercury. Jupiter is just starting to emerge. You may or may not be able to see Jupiter based on um, like tree lines and those kinds of things. And, and even knowing that even though we can't see Venus, she's in her underworld phase, that she's traveling there behind the sun. So it's like through the sun, we can connect to Venus. And I think that's really, really beautiful. And it helps connect us and ground us to earth because um, earth is the planet that we live on. It's, it's kind of funny. Sometimes in astrology, um, we can forget about the earth, but the earth is the most important planet because it's the planet that we live on. Gemini Brett shares that. And I always love that reminder, our astrology charts, most of them, uh, most astrologers are working with geocentric charts. So the earth is in the middle because we experience the planetary energies um, from the earth. And so I love to get my bare feet on the earth, be with the earth, honor the earth. Remember that I am the earth. We are the earth. And so I want to pull up the chart so I can show you. Oh, I'm a few days ahead. <laughs> okay, so we can see here now that the sun is in Pisces. I think the sun moved into Pisces on Thursday with all this Aquarius and Pisces energy. Things are very nonlinear. Things are very multidimensional. So linear time, I have a really hard time, <laughs> a really hard time keeping up with. Um, but the sun is now in Pisces. We still have Saturn, Mercury, Jupiter, and Aquarius. Venus is in her last days of being in Aquarius, and then she'll move into Pisces, which is a sign that she is exalted in. Venus loves to be in Pisces. So it's Thursday morning when she shifts into Pisces and joins the sun. And with this Pisces energy, um, Pisces is the sign of the ocean of oneness, you know, where we all return or where, where we all come from and where we all return again. So it represents the etheric realms, the heavenly realms, the imaginative realms. Pisces energy is about connecting to um, something beyond this 3D physical reality. And, you know, it might be thought of as something beyond yourself or connecting to your higher self, you know, the, your spirit, however you want to conceptualize it. Now, when we're in Pisces season, um, because there is this connection with the etheric, the heavenly, the imaginative realms, our intuitions tend to be heightened and opened up. Um, it's an amazing time to really check in and bring more discernment to our intuition, um, make sure that what we're picking up that feels intuitive um, 
is coming from, you know, a pure source. Pisces also rules the media, film, the film industry. And so um, we can get a little energetically, become energetic sponges with Pisces energy. So um, while yes, our intuition is heightened, it's so good to check in and know what information, know where the source of the information that's coming in. Um, I always love to like muscle test. I do like the hands on the heart and the sway test just to just to check in with my intuition. And I think that's always a good reminder. Um, you know, we can feel more creative. It's like Pisces is the sign of like poets and mystics and um, we become more energetically sensitive. So, you know, that can be a beautiful thing or we can also feel, we might feel a little more anxious or some of, um, you know, we can just start to become psychic sponges and absorbing the energy that's around us from others or spaces. And so it's really important to have really good energetic boundaries during Pisces season and, you know, doing the clearing practices, practices, moving energy. Pisces is mutable water. Water is flowing. It's the emotional realms, the unconscious realms, the dream realm. Pisces has such a connection to dreams, the modern ruler of Pisces, Neptune is in Pisces as well, has been there for a long time and will continue to be there because Neptune moves slow, but it's water and it's mutable, which is moving, flowing, changing. So any type of movement practice like Qigong, I've just got back into my Qigong practice with my beautiful Qigong teacher, Diane of Heartwood Healing Arts. Definitely go check her out. She's just phenomenal. After I did a Qigong practice with her, I think it was last week or the week before last that's the when I got back into it I felt energetically better than I felt in a long time and Qigong is moving the energy um dancing you know doing lymphatic massage I've started back up on my jade roller on my face just to do the lymphatic massage on my face um doing the Ayurvedic massage with the oil, just anything that's going to move our lymph fluid, that's going to move our energy. It's all connected. Um, and as well with Pisces season, um, I feel like I had one more point to say on Pisces season, but it's really kind of slipping me now. That is, um, you know, a time Pisces energy is so energetically sensitive. So the Pisces energy is compassionate is empathic. Um, and we want to just, you know, be mindful of our boundaries. So um, because there is that, you know, there is that deep, deep compassion, Pisces feels everything because it is connected to oneness. So those of you that are strong in Pisces energy, I'm pretty strong in Pisces energy. I have Mercury and my North node there. Um, you know, we, we feel everything. So we we're, we're deeply connected to the collective energy. Pisces represents the collective unconscious. And so, you know, um, those that are strong in Pisces energy, we can feel, you know, the suffering of the collective, the burdens of the world. And so it's so important that we're just not carrying all the weight of the world on our shoulders because no one person <laughs> needs to carry the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. And then also in Pisces season, just being mindful of um, kind of the maybe a more unconscious or like an uninitiated side of Pisces can be the, the mortar kind of energy of like just self-sacrificing to the point where it's not healthy or might even be self-abusive. And then sometimes becoming resentful for that, you know, that, that self-sacrifice to others or mortaring yourself to others. And so it's just so great to be it's so great to be mindful of that energy and in Pisces season, just minding your mind. Um, I saw I saw someone post a quote earlier by Joe Dispenza that was, you know, if you don't control your mind, someone else will. And I'm not a huge fan of the word control, but um, I do love the essence of it. I don't really feel like I have to control my mind. There's something that feels very constrictive about that to me, but I want to be in an empowered relationship with my mind. And, you know, again, with Pisces being connected to the media, the film industry, those kinds of things, you know, we are inundated with messages, unconscious, you know, subliminal messages um, all day long throughout our world. And so it's just so important to, have those good energetic boundaries to honor the gates of your mind. We have the Virgo full moon on, it's like really early Friday morning. It's like um, 
depending where you're at, Thursday night, really early Friday morning. Um, Central Standard Time is a time zone I'm using. So it's the, it's the early morning. And um, that's just such a great time to, you know, honor the, honor the gates of our mind, honor the temple of our body, treating life like it is a sacred temple. And that's so great to do all of the time, but especially um, this is a great reminder. And so Venus will be joining the sun and Pisces, which is, I, I love Venus and Pisces. It's such a beautiful energy. You know, Venus, um, the planet of relationships to everyone and everything, the relationship with ourself and also relationships with others. She's a planet of beauty, harmony, aesthetics, justice. She represents our values, our self-worth, our values. Um, you know, our inner and outer resources. So external resources, she represents our money and our relationship to money. And so Venus going into Pisces, it's like the, the romantic, the poet, the mystic, the, the healer. It's a really beautiful energy. Um, it's a great time, you know, being the planet of beauty, really attending to our own energy, our own aura, beauty from within, beauty that comes through a spiritual connection. Um, and you know, the interesting thing is Venus, she's exalted in Pisces, but she's now fully in the underworld journey. We cannot see Venus in the sky. So she's, you know, finishing out the first half of her 19 month cycle that started in Gemini on June 3rd. And then she'll come behind the sun, which is like the halfway point of the cycle. And she'll move around now when she's in the underworld, um, it's this opportunity for, I love as Sasha Benedetti says, regeneration um, to regenerate. So, you know, as she's been falling in the morning sky, like the last five months or so, every time she met up with a moon, it was like a portal. And we were asked to surrender, release, strip away anything that's not true and pure to our Venusian essence, our feminine essence, our sacred heart. So, there's so much conditioning that has not been supportive of the feminine essence in, in our society. So we've been in this surrender, this release. And now that we're, you know, surrendered, released, we've stripped down what is no longer truly us. We are regenerating to, you know, be reborn as she comes out as an evening star with this, you know, just radiating in our true authentic feminine essence, whatever that is for, for each of us. But as she's, you know, Kind of traveling into the underworld it is it is representative of the underworld so you know facing our unconscious and so i think it might be mindful to be aware of um maybe some of the more unconscious or shadow sides of pisces venus and pisces that might initiate so one the big one i think of is um you know, sometimes Venus and Pisces can have like the rose colored glasses. Um, so we might be more susceptible to, you know, seeing with Pisces, it's like seeing the, seeing the light, seeing that, that oneness in everyone. And so um, we may be seeing someone's spirit or, or their, you know, potential, but not really seeing what they're presenting themselves as like in the 3D physical world. Um, we may, we may be more inclined with Venus and Pisces to just bypass and just, oh, to feel their beautiful essence, but not really paying attention to red flags or just like the actions that someone are showing us. And so we may be, or we may be a little more, um, you know, naively trusting of others. So it's just a great time to really, again, check in with our intuition, our discernment, and make sure that we're not like wearing rose colored glasses in relationships, because that can, you know, if we're doing that um, too much, that can start to have, um, you know, unhealthy effects on our lives. So there's that. And again, I think that invitation just to really fine tune our intuition. So not always just um, because how do I want to say it? <laughs> I'm feeling it, but how do I want to say it? So, you know, intuitive information can come in from all sorts of sources. <laughs> They're not all sources that are, are truth, not all sources of intuitive information that can come in are of a pure essence. And um, they're not all, you know, supportive energies. So I think it's so important to just really be aware of, instead of just automatically assuming something that feels like an intuition, to just check in, 
does this feel like it's a supportive source of information? And I think that can be so important. Um, and, you know, Venus and Pisces also just checking in, where are we engaging in like, you know, the, that self mortardom type behavior? Where do we, you know, where are we sacrificing ourselves for others when it doesn't feel authentic to ourselves? So if it feels authentic to give and to be of service, you know, Pisces and Virgo, it's like the access of sacred service. If it feels authentic from, if it feels from the heart to give and be of service and to help, that's beautiful. But also, it's an, I think it's a really helpful idea with Venus and Pisces, especially as she's moving into the underworld to check in. Is it coming from my heart? Does it feel fulfilling for me? Or is it coming maybe from a codependent place, like a place of not enough or a place of fear of being rejected if I don't give, 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 or, or this idea that I'll be more likable if I give, 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 give. And so I think that's just so amazing to check in as Venus is starting to go into, I mean, she's already in the underworld. She's traveling behind the sun. And so this is a time to explore um, the more unconscious expressions of our feminine essence that are not authentic to us and, and not supportive. And it's a time of deep, deep transformation. Um, it's, I, I think it's a really beautiful time. And so Last week we had Venus squaring Mars. I'll just go back a few days just to show you. Mars is down here in Taurus. There's Venus. Let me go one more day. It was like last Friday when she was squaring Mars. So there's some like friction to the feminine and the masculine energy. It's an amazing creative energy. There's a like a sexual chemistry to that energy. If you did find yourself um, like particularly in romantic partnerships, if you had any conflict or um, anything, you know, anything that felt conflict or tent of, of conflict or tense, you know, that could be the Venus Mars square, but ultimately it's um, a pressurized energy squares are pressurized energy and they're meant to, um, you know, catalyze a change to motivate us to, to make a change in our actions and our behavior. And so, um, it's a powerful energy of working with the feminine and the masculine energy. And they're still kind of riding together in, in a square, although Venus is moving faster than faster than Mars down here in Taurus. And again, the big energy last week was the Saturn Uranus square. So Saturn being, there's Saturn, Saturn, you know, being structure, boundaries, Saturn creates the rules, you know, Saturn represents the structure of the 3D physical reality. Uranus is the planet that shatters through the 3D physical reality and allows us to connect beyond to the multidimensional realms, the quantum realm. So it's this um, really this like the energy of the square, it's pressurized energy. So squaring energy doesn't always feel good. It can feel like a lot of internal pressure. It may just feel internal. It may be coming from an external source, but it's getting us to, you know, Uranus is the awakener, liberating to liberate ourselves, shatter through old boundaries, old limitations, you know, shattering through being bound by old authority that just does not resonate with us and to claim our own authority, you know, to create a revolution within. And I love as Sasha Benedetti says of Uranus and Taurus, the wisdom is in our body. Um, Taurus is a sign of our resources. So it's our resourcefulness. Uranus and Taurus is an opportunity to get really inventive about our resourcefulness. So what resources can we generate from completely within? And also um, what resources can we resource as we come together in community? All of this Aquarian energy is about community connection. And when we come together in community, we can find, oh my gosh, we can create just about anything with the wisdom and the resources that we all have. And when we share them, I mean, it's really amazing. There's really a call to form with like-minded community, become resourceful, bring your resources together, create something beautiful to support the community outside of some of these big structures, like that we've been supported not, I mean, you may or may not have, I don't know, but as in general, these big structures that we've been reliant on that, you know, it's the time to let's, let's take back some of the power and let's, let's create some of these resources from within and how can they benefit the whole community and our most um, vulnerable individuals? How can, how can we come together to support our children? So let's see here. We have also on Thursday, we can see here Mercury is finally going to move from 11 degrees. If you watch Mercury right there, 
He's been at 11 degrees. That's where he stationed retrograde on Saturday. And on Thursday uh, morning, along with Venus moving into Pisces, Mercury is finally going to move to 12 degrees. So he's moving from that station degree. We'll get some forward momentum. Mercury in Aquarius is about free thinking, you know, liberation of the mind, able to see beyond the typical limits of the mind. You know, Aquarius is ascended up, up and out. We can look down and see how everyone and everything is interconnected. So, um, you know, what new perceptions of your mind have you, you know, perceived since Mercury through this Mercury retrograde process, Mercury station retrograde, I think it was January 30th and then stationed direct on, um, on Saturday evening. So it was all about, you know, um, creating a revolution within our perception, perceiving something in a new way, kind of becoming more expansive in our mind. Um, you know, again, like breaking out of the boundaries, the limits of our mind, there's nothing that limits us more than our own mind. When we can open up our mind to seeing new possibilities, our reality literally changes. We can see there's more available to us in every moment than we ever realize. Um, I think it's a really exciting, I think it's a really exciting energy and also something to contemplate as Venus moves into Pisces. Um, what new perceptions, you know, what new insights have we had in our relationships? Because Mercury met with Venus during his retrograde journey. And so that was really a time that we could get more insight on our relationships. It also was going to bring to awareness you know, um, things we need to revisit on relationships, right? So what needs to be, what are, what are, what are higher self is wanting to transform, to change, to alchemize, um, particularly our thought patterns and relationships, our beliefs and relationships, you know, our own beliefs, our own thought patterns often skew our perception of relationships. We're, you know, in a relationship, it could be more than one person, but, you know, with two people, um, you know, I have, let's just say me and someone else, I have my lens of perspective that's based on all of my life experiences. And the other person has their own lens of perspective based on all of their life experiences. And when we're, you know, interacting in the relationship, which is almost like this third, you know, this magical third, we're experiencing the same relationship as different, as different ways, you know, from our own lens of perspective. So Aquarius helps us like widen our lens of perspective, you know, have a broader awareness and to move out of, you know, more of our maybe more limited or narrow lens of perspective. And so as Venus moves into Pisces, what new insight in our relationships do we want to carry forward? And I think that's so beautiful for the Pisces energy, the Pisces energy. I mean, it's an incredibly creative energy. It's an amazing energy to do art, to create, and also remember, that you know Virgo the opposite of Pisces to create art or create anything we don't need it doesn't have to be perfect sometimes um you know at least for me something I've had to work through is you know I I need a creative outlet but I have a Virgo self node so sometimes you know it's almost like my desire for perfection stops me from even creating or it really disrupts the flow of creating so can can you create just to create you know create art dance, singing, whatever it is, music, poetry, creating just to create, to tap into that beautiful creative energy. Because when we start creating anything, we align with the energy, the vibration of creation. And then we can start creating more in our lives. Creation actually becomes more natural and fluid for us. And creation is very fluid with the Pisces energy being a mutable sign. And so on Thursday, I mean, on Friday, <laughs> On, on Friday morning, um, let's see, or is it Saturday? I actually think it's Saturday morning. I don't know what I said earlier. Okay, so Saturday morning, I'm just gonna go back some. I'm not gonna worry about getting it perfect, right? As I was just talking about the um, the Virgo energy, not worrying about per per perfection. The Virgo new moon is gonna be at eight degrees of moon at eight degrees of Virgo, sun at eight degrees of Pisces. So I don't have it perfectly lined up here, but this is, this is enough to get you to, you know, to get you to the general energy. And, um, you know, the moon, full moon is a time of illumination 
And so to bring illumination to Virgo, our habits, you know, our health habits, our, our daily routines, our patterns, to bring illumination to how our habits and patterns supporting or not supporting a healthy lifestyle. And it's a great time to really, you know, recommit or rededicate to our healthy habits and patterns and self-care. You know, Virgo and Pisces, I call it the sacredness access. It is the sign of sacred service. So to bring illumination to the sacred service that you are here to offer or feel feel called to offer at this time, you know, to whatever it is to the best and highest good for you, we can bring illumination there. Um, it's a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful energy. I personally align more with, I, I, I've transitioned from cycling with the moon to cycling with Venus and the moon, but we still are experiencing the energy of the moon. And I think that's a beautiful opportunity to bring um, just illumination to our health, our habits, our routines. You know, Virgo is about um, honoring our body as a sacred temple. So what we're putting into our body, that, you know, as far as um, information coming into our mind, the food we're eating, the water we're drinking, treating life as a sacred temple, you know, life as a sacred ceremony, going through life as a sacred ceremony. So, you know, um, jade, I, I've, I've started back to, you know, for lymphatic massage for my face, you know, using the jade roller. It's like this, this sacred ritual, the ceremony to start in the morning. It's so beautiful. And, you know, brushing your teeth and, you know, drinking your tea or juicing, whatever it is, all these little things in our life can be the sacred, the sacred devotion. And they can turn into ceremony when we bring sacredness, when we attune our attention to it in that way. Now, also, I think it's a great time to also bring illumination to um, self-criticism, <laughs> you know, one of the, um, you know, Virgo, just in general, it is the high priestess archetype and the high priestesses devote themselves to excellence, right? Their sacred ritual and they really do them with excellence. And so sometimes we can, in our society, you know, that can turn into, um, you know, perfectionism, which can be a beautiful thing. It's just how we're relating to it. There can be like, a, you know, if it becomes too compulsive or there's this, if, you know, perfectionism can come uh, paralyzing or we can become over analytical, you know, analysis can become paralysis or we can be incredibly harsh or self-critical with ourselves sometimes if um, with the Virgo energy and I have a Virgo self node, So that's something I really had to consciously work on. And, you know, so much of the time self-criticism is really not helpful. It does not motivate us to make a change, maybe to some degree, but there's even research on this. Dr. Kristen Neff um, with Mindful Self-Compassion from UT Austin. She's done so much research on self-compassion and self-criticism and self-criticism really is not very supportive but for us. It just, if anything, it stifles creativity. It stifles the flow of energy. So I think this is a beautiful opportunity. Where are we being overly self-critical? Where is our own mind kind of shutting us down? You know, and it can relate to Saturn, you know, that, that kind of authoritarian energy. Where have we developed this like authoritarian voice that, you know, should have, you know, you should have or not enough, those kinds of voices, like to just become aware of them so we can transmit them. Because of course, we are always enough. We are always enough. We are always worthy in every single moment. Being a human, Virgo, you know, it's earth sign. It's, um, it's the goddess, you know, it's the priestess. It is the, the body um, where, you know, we are human. So learning and growing is just part of the journey. We do not need to be perfect in every single moment. And our humanness can be our greatest, you know, some of the greatest beauty within ourselves, you know, our imperfections can be the most beautiful aspects of ourself. And so I just think that's such a great, where is our mind kind of shutting us down with self-criticism to be aware of with the Virgo full moon that's coming up. And then um, as we move into next week, there's some, a few, there's, I mean, there's so much energy, but I just wanted to point to, you can see here, Jupiter is, um, well, if we go back, Jupiter has been very close to a trine to the North node. I mean, Jupiter is trining the North node, but it will be on, I think it's on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, and going hours. <laughs> That's why I was like, what is, I was like, what's happening? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you can see here on Tuesday, Jupiter is going to meet, um, you know, make perfect its trying to the North node at 16 degrees and the South node at 
16, sextiling the south node at 16 degrees. So this is a beautiful energy. Um, the north node is about, you know, it's, now this is the collective north node. So they're on some level, you know, the north node is about destiny, future. It's really the collective level. We all have a personal north node somewhere. It's so amazing to know your north node. Um, but as Jupiter is, is trining the north node, the energy is already here. It's been here, you know, for about a week and it's already here. It will go into, go into next week. Um, it's a beautiful invitation, you know, to really, there's some auspicious energy to connect to, you know, expansive energy for our future. There may be some synchronistic opportunities that come through. Again, always check in with your intuition and your discernment. There's an expansive energy, you know, creative energy towards our future. And this is air. Our North Node is in Gemini. And I was really sharing right when the North Node moved into Gemini last May. And the North Node will be in Gemini through the end of this year. It's an amazing time to invest in learning things that light your heart up with joy, um, learning things for your future, you know, for your sacred services that you offer, things that just truly, it's that Gemini, it's that like lighthearted, joyful energy. And maybe it is something directly related to, you know, work and maybe it's not, but so Jupiter trining, Jupiter and Aquarius, you know, expansive it's like expansive ideas. There's this innovative energy. Jupiter's energy is expansion. The essence of Jupiter is to expand, you know, it's our inner need for expansion, soul expansion, you know, expanding the horizons of our mind, our spirit, our life um, to, you know, to have a deeper spiritual connection, a more expanded spiritual connection. So Jupiter trining the North Node is very auspicious. It's Jupiter is a planet of good fortune, abundance, blessings. And I just think it's so amazing to tune into this energy because there is so much kind of intense and challenging energy, especially like with the Saturn Uranus square. We had the um, Venus Mars square last week to be able to, again, Gemini, it's what are, it's open to new possibilities. And that's a great thing. You know, there might be some new possibilities and it might just be even with our mind, like Aquarius and Gemini, it's air, it's the mind. So being able to envision, see new opportunities that are coming in this next week as Jupiter is trining the North Node, or there may actually be, um, you know, like in the physical, more tangible new opportunity. It's a time of faded things, synchronistic things. Um, I think it's a really auspicious and beautiful energy. And then Mercury will be coming to trine the North Node on, I think on Thursday. Uh, yeah. Mercury will be there trining the North Node on Thursday. Now, this will be the third pass that Mercury will be making because Mercury, you know, moved forward in Aquarius in January at 26 Aquarius, pivoted, you know, stationed retrograde, went back, backwards to 11 Aquarius, and now is moving back forward again. So this will be the third pass. And, um, you know, so the first time Mercury passed the North Node, it's like, oh, perhaps like we have like a glimpse of a new, you know, new idea. Mercury is the mind, thoughts, communication. Mercury is our perception. So we might have a new, ah, oh, a new idea for something we want to pursue for our future. Then he went backwards, like between January 30th and last Saturday, Mercury went back over the South or the North Node backwards. And it was like, you know, maybe a little revision, a reconceptualizing, a rethinking, a little refining. The, the retrogrades are like the rewords, right? Revisiting, rethinking for Mercury, because he's the mind. And then now Mercury is going to go forward again. So again, like really pay attention next week, there could be some really auspicious energy coming in for our future. Now they're also, you know, making the sextile to the south node, which is a time to connect to um, past life gifts. Um, we could even kind of channel in some past life gifts. I think this is pretty close to the south node is pretty close to the great attractor. Um, we can also see now this is kind of next week, but Mars is already there. Mars is in the Pleiades. So anyone who has a strong connection to the Pleiades, we have a Pleiadian activation. I have, I have Venus um, in the Pleiades. So I have a very strong Pleiadian activation. So there's so much more. I feel like that's good for today <laughs> because I, I have Venus and Gemini. So I love to talk and talk and talk and talk and share. I'm just wishing you the best day ever, you know, just wishing you just blessings and this, I think that's a beautiful energy, Venus moving into Pisces, Jupiter, Mercury, trining the North Node, wishing you blessings and love. And I look forward to connecting with you soon.